Hello and welcome back to the channel. I have been using Max for video editing for a good number of years now and going back and forth between either the iMac, which I currently have on my desk right next to me, or my MacBook Pro, which I recently traded in for a MacBook Air. The one thing I've never actually tried out though is the Mac Mini. And as you may or may not be aware, Apple recently unveiled the newer generation of devices containing their own custom designed silicon chip, the M1. So I decided to sort of go out on a limb and try out the new Mac Mini. And while I am currently using again an iMac 2017, 40 gigabytes of RAM that I upgraded, this is the Mac Mini that I picked up. 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. I'm very curious if this is going to be able to handle my workload. The internal storage I'm not terribly concerned about. I have 512 gigs on my iMac and I've, well, I've come close to hitting the max on that a few times, but more often than not, as soon as I'm done with a project, I move it off to external storage and then back that up. So I do regularly keep it around 150 to 200 gigs used max. So I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get this opened up so I can start using it. So this will be the first Mac Mini I have ever actually had hands on, never opened one or anything. And there it is, as you might expect, has a little pull tab. This is the silver color. The previous model was a space gray. I'm fine with this. It's simple. We've also got the design by Apple in California, tiny amount of documentation, and of course, a big old sticker. And then the power cable, relatively simple, flat cable of decent length, actually quite a bit more than I'm going to need because I do have a power strip attached to my desk. So I'm probably only going to need two feet of this. Now the all important moment. Here is the underside of the Mac mini. Then there is a black port cover on the back here. So just top to bottom, left to right, Apple logo on top, status LED here on the front, if you can see that. Nothing on the left, nothing on the right. This foot on the bottom, this is where you would open it up if you wanted to take this apart. But with this newer model, not a whole lot of reason to take it apart. I don't think there's actually any replaceable parts. If anything, it might be the SSD, but even that I think is going to be challenging. Then on the back, sort of the meat and potatoes as it were, power button, power cable connection point, Ethernet port. Here's the, the fan, the outgoing air section. Two USB-C ports. These are the latest and greatest Gen 4 ports. HDMI, two USB-A ports, and a three and a half millimeter port. And that's about all there is to it. Very simple, very straightforward. Unfortunately, comparing to previous generations, the last generation did have four USB-C ports. Very sad to see there only be two, but I'm guessing that probably has to do with the limitation of the new chip. And also a little bit bummed out that there's no SD card slot. As you may have guessed with my current setup, I have a main camera, I have an overhead camera, then I have a separate audio recording device. So I do have three SD cards that I regularly pull into my computer. I do have a two card reader that's USB-C, but then usually with the iMac, I plug the third card in so I can pull from all three at the exact same time. With the Mac mini, I'm either going to have to have another SD card reader, which I do have more than that, or just do two and then one, but that's going to make the process take longer. I suppose we'll see. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead, get this all set up. I'm going to go through the setup process. It's a Mac setup. There's no real reason for me to go through that on camera. Transfer data, install applications. The main thing I kind of wanted to get out of this video is I want to take the same projects side by side on the iMac and on the new Mac mini. Again, 2017 iMac, pretty decently specced out. And I want to compare it. I want to see how they stack up. I want to see if the new M1 chip can kick the butt out of a 2017 iMac, even with this only having eight gigs of RAM. So let's cut to me from the future. And we're back the next day. I have gone ahead and gotten the Mac mini set up. As you can probably see, it is right down here. I do have my 2017 iMac set up here right next to it. And boy, has it been quite the last day. So before I go any further, very valuable lesson and learned. If you're able to see the screenshot that I've pulled up here from the Apple website, it shows on the Mac mini page, but only the Mac mini page related to the M1 Mac mini. You can connect one external display up to 6K and a second using HDMI 2.0. Now I do have it lined up here so that you can't really see a whole lot, but if I turn this way just a little bit, you might notice I have two monitors there. One is not working. They are identical LG ultra fine, 24 inch, ultra sharp, whatever they call it. The 4K displays that USB-C only, and they only work with Apple devices by default, but only one of them's working. I've tried daisy chaining them together. I've tried plugging them both into USB-C, but as it says in the screenshot, which I somehow missed in the ordering process, 
one external display over Thunderbolt, the other one has to be HDMI, and these LG monitors do not support HDMI, so I am kind of out of luck there. With that said, I thought I would just show you very quickly the performance difference between the two, and the reason why I will probably be keeping the Mac Mini anyway. So the way that I traditionally output my videos, I click on Apple Devices 4K. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything queued up here. So I have the exact same project ready to go on both of them. I do have a timer on my phone setup down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just hit enter on both of these at the same time. They are now exporting. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer and pull up this little section over here so we can just keep an eye on it. Sorry if you couldn't hear me there for a second. Now I will admit, I did go ahead and try this earlier. I just wanted to see how they would compare. And actually, now that I'm running it a second time, they appear to be running very similarly, but I'm just gonna let them run. We'll be right back. All right, the M1 Mac Mini is now done. Three minutes, 40 something seconds. We're at 70% on the iMac. Again, 2017 iMac, 40 gigs of RAM. Whenever I ran this earlier, it was significantly farther apart than this. I do have background rendering turned off on both of them, but I did have Chrome open on the iMac earlier, so maybe that made a little bit of a difference. And there we go. And there's the splits for you. And I did actually hit the button a little bit closer to when the iMac actually completed. So lap one here is how long it took the Mac Mini M1. Lap two is the additional time. So we're looking at three minutes, 45 seconds on a seven minute clip, seven minutes, 20 seconds, and almost one to one total for the iMac. And I've run this exact same test with a couple of different projects and it's come out the same way pretty much every time. Now, realistically, again, we're talking about an iMac that is now three years old versus a Mac mini that is brand new. But I'll be honest, I was always kind of under the impression that the RAM was going to make the bigger difference, that we were going to be seeing massive performance gains by adding more RAM. But this is the bog standard eight gigs of RAM M1 Mac Mini, and it's able to thrash the iMac that I've been using for years that I paid $2,500 for, and then another couple hundred dollars for RAM, so almost $3,000. The M1 Mac Mini is $700. As a minor follow-up to the earlier testing that I was doing, found out that I was actually testing it incorrectly. On the new Mac Mini, I was testing with the faster encode 4K option, and on my iMac, I was doing the higher quality, which obviously is going to take a lot longer. So to make it apples to apples and to actually put a little bit of favor on the Mac Mini, I changed them both to 8-bit HEVC export, and I'm actually still in the process of exporting it on the iMac. The Mac Mini finished in 3 minutes 33 seconds for the same clip, 7 minutes and 21 seconds. So I'm at 7 minutes and 10 seconds right now. We're at 87% on the iMac, where again, the Mac Mini has already finished and is uploading. I've checked the quality of the clip, compared it to the previous ones. They both look very similar. Just from my eye on a 4K display, I'm not able to see the difference. So that's good enough for me to push it to YouTube. And like I said, I am uploading it to YouTube and I'm gonna compare it there as well. Either way, I think this is gonna be a significant time saver for me in terms of rendering. There we go. The iMac finally finished up eight minutes and four seconds. So it is longer than one-to-one -one when doing the HEVC export. Whereas again, Mac mini, three minutes, 33 seconds. That is actually faster than two to one. And I will follow up again once I get this video uploaded to YouTube, just to make sure that it compares quality wise, apples to apples with what I've been uploading. But I have a good feeling about this. Another thing to mention, since I made the previous clips, importing footage into the Mac mini, I am having issues using the SD reader. Anytime I put an SD card in, I have to restart Final Cut to get it to work correctly. I'm guessing that's either having to do with the new hardware or the new OS. I wasn't having that issue on my iMac running Big Sur though, so I'm guessing it's the hardware in the Mac Mini. Hopefully that's something that will get fixed in short order. Also a bit of a downer, the software that I normally use to help me edit my video, the Joypad Mapper, I use a PlayStation controller plugged in directly, and then I've mapped everything to the things I commonly do in the app. That unfortunately does not work correctly on this new Mac. And it's not a Big Sur problem because it did, again, work perfectly on the iMac running Big Sur. But again, we'll come back here in just a few minutes once this finishes uploading and processing. We'll see how the quality compares and wrap things up. And obviously I'm not going to be able to show you extremely well what the difference looks like, but this is the HEVC encoded one that I've just uploaded and the original one that is live on YouTube right now. 
I've gone frame by frame through both of these pretty extensively and there are some really, really minor differences if you're really looking for them, but the way that YouTube processes the videos, you're really never going to notice a difference. And the resulting file sizes were actually quite a bit smaller. This file, for instance, was about 848 megabytes, where the original was a little over a gig. So all in all, I think I'm pretty happy with this. And I believe that's where I'm gonna wrap this video up for today. As I've mentioned a couple of times now, there are still a few weird things about the new Mac Mini. Not being able to run multiple USB-C monitors and having issues Choose mounting SD cards. The SD card thing I'm sure will be taken care of in time and the, the monitor situation I'll just deal with like I mentioned earlier. But one way or the other, thank you guys so much as always for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, hit the thumbs up down below. And if you're not already and you'd like to be, hit the subscribe button as well. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and it definitely helps to support the channel. And if you want to get notified whenever my new videos do come out, hit that notification bell that's also down there. That'll just send you a message or a notification of some kind to let you know when I do post a new video because you never really know when that's going to be. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you again next time.